I have a friend, Sean. Sean and I were buddies, we hang out, we do stuff together, but we are also business partners. And whenever we're together, we're constantly thinking, trying to come up with a product or an idea that will resonate with people, and that people will be interested in, and they'll want and desire. And after several not so great ideas and lots of things that didn't work, we came up with one that we thought probably would. What if we could create an article of clothing that would charge your phone while you wear it? And so after tinkering with the idea and working with it for a while, we came up with the idea for a hooded sweatshirt that had a portable phone charger in the front pocket. Now, when we came up with this idea, it was purely a business idea. All for profit, nothing more, nothing less. And I was entirely unaware of the other value it have and the impact on my point of view it have. And I was unaware of this until a few months ago when I was assigned a writing assignment. And my assignment was to um, respond to Ralph Waldo Emerson's essay called Self Reliance. And in my assignment, I was to pick a quotation that I enjoyed particularly and analyze its importance and value, but also its importance and value to me. And so, being someone who doesn't really like writing and was never very good at it, I didn't really think twice about the assignment. And, however, when I began to read through his essay, I kind of enjoyed it, and I particularly enjoyed one quote, and the quote's this. It is easy in the world to live after the world's opinion. It's easy in solitude to live after our own. But the great man is he who in the midst of the crowd keeps with perfect sweetness the independence of solitude. Now, as I was working with this essay and thinking about the quote and drawing connections between it and my life, I naturally divided it into three sections. The first, it is easy in the world to live after the world's opinion. Now, this part of the quote I directly linked to my freshman year of high school. Coming in as a freshman, I was looking to find my place, and I particularly wanted to be, to want to, I wanted to feel wanted. I wanted to fit in with the popular people, and I wanted to be one of those kids, and in doing so, I lost some of my own personal values, and I was blind to things that I believed in, and I was being fed beliefs from those around me, as if I was being charged from an outlet on the wall. I wasn't charging for myself, I was being fed these beliefs. And this proved not to be very good for me because I was, my grades had dropped a little bit and I was particularly unhappy. So I decided that I needed to change. And um, rather than be fed from those around me, why don't I just take for myself and cut off those connections? And so towards the end of my freshman year I did so and I was completely secluded. Uh, that's the second part of the quote. It's easy in solitude to live after our own. And returning as a sophomore in high school, I was still completely cut off and secluded. And I had very few friends, and they did not go to school with me. And yes, I still talked to people at school and still had some connections. I didn't find any value in them. And they weren't important to me, and I didn't try to expand them at all. And this proved to be even more detrimental to me. My grades dropped even lower than they were before, and I had never been so unhappy. Um, so although I was sort of pulling for myself as if I was charging myself, I was not even aware of those around me, and it was not good for me. And personally, I, myself, my parents, my sister, Dr. Brown, and all other advisors recognized that something needed to change. And that recognition was great. But I didn't recognize what, and I didn't know how to start that change. So, as my sophomore year came to a close, I had made the recognition, but I hadn't started at all. And so, throughout the summer leading into my junior year, I thought and was able to reflect on myself and what I needed to do and value upon my return to school in the fall. And when I returned, I was able to have a complete shift in attitude. No longer was I completely cold to those around me, yet I was still not controlled by them. And that is the third part of the quote. The great man is he who in the midst 
with the crowd and keeps the perfect sweetness, the independence of solitude. Now, for those of you listening, you may have caught a bit of a contradiction with what I've been saying. I seem to be up here preaching that social media and a less literal, just pure connection is not necessarily what we should focus on. It should not be first and foremost. And if that's the case, why would I want to create a product that entirely promotes that and tries to keep it going all the time? My answer is this. It has to be an individual thing. It has to come from the individual. To try to pick one side or the other is a waste of time because it's about a balance. Each individual must put their own needs first and be aware of the surrounding web of social media and opinion only after they put their own needs first. Because all the battery power in the world will not help you find your place in that hope. I have created my own battery. I can charge myself and give myself energy no matter where I go, whenever I need it, but it's not a tether. I am not completely reliant on it. And so, I ask each of you listening to take a step back and ask yourself, not anyone around you, but yourself, what you can do for you. Evaluate what your sources of energy and power are. And then also look and maybe think to yourself, what are the sources that are giving you things that you may not need? So really take a step back and think about what gives you your power. Thank you.